I am sure you know that Dagupan City holds the Guinness Book of World Records for the longest street broiling of bangus. I am sure you know that in Bayambang, we have another Guinness Book of World Records holder of the highest bamboo statue of St. Vincent Ferrer in the prayer park. Today, most likely, we are breaking another world record for Guinness Book with the consultation that Pope Francis has launched for the church all over the world in preparation for the Synod 2023. Pope Francis called for a synod which will happen in Rome in 2023. But in preparation for that, for two straight years, will be consultation on the synodality of the church. What is the meaning of the church walking together on the same path, walking together on the same road, in the same rhythm, in the steps of the Lord? Pope Francis is quite daring because it has never happened in church history that two years of consultation has been done within the Catholic Church. But he is the Pope. He is the successor of Peter. And we know that the Holy Spirit guides him. We know that the Lord Jesus, the Good Shepherd, guides him. And where Peter is, where the Pope is, we will always go. So, he is leading us to the kind of church that is closer to what the Gospel teaches us today. So, what kind of church do we need for the third millennium? What kind of the church, what kind of church do we need for the year 2023 and so many more years to come? First and foremost, it must be the Church of Jesus Christ. Ang simbahan ay hindi pwedeng dilawan o pulahan o pink. Sapagkat ang mga bagay na ito ay naghihiwalay-hiwalay sa atin. Ang simbahan ay palaging kay Kristo. Hindi sa kulay, hindi sa partido, hindi sa politika, hindi sa pera, kundi palaging kay Kristo. We should always choose Christ above ideology. The church is called to be a leader in the world because the church is called to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. But as the church leads in the world, the church cannot be elitist. We can lead without being elitist. We can lead without being exclusive. We must lead and yet be all-embracing. What kind of church do we need for the third millennium? It must be a church that goes to the marginalized. It must be a church that goes to the laylayan. But it is not a church that allows itself to be marginalized. It is a church that goes to the marginalized, but a church that does not allow itself to be marginalized. A church that, allow, that works to be at the center of decision-making, not for the sake of the church, but because Christ should be at the center of decision-making. And we are all created in the image and likeness of God, and therefore, we should not be marginalized. We must lead without being elitist. We must go to the marginalized without allowing ourselves to be marginalized. We must go to the dark areas without sinning. We must go to the dark areas where there is no light without sinning so that we can bring the light of Christ there. When we priests go to dark areas, it is not because we want to do something secretive and sinful. It is because we want to bring Christ there. Because what is the use of bringing the light of Christ 
to a society that is enjoying the light from the sun, who is Christ himself. The light of Christ must go to the dark spots. The light of Christ must go to the dark alleys. The light of Christ must go to where people are living in darkness. It is a church that leads but is not elitist. It is a church that is marginalized but does not allow itself to be marginalized. It is a church that goes to dark areas without sinning in order to bring the light of Christ there. My dear brothers and sisters, it is a church that is comfortable with attending rallies and yet comfortable also with kneeling down before the Blessed Sacrament in adoration. It is a church that is contemplative and yet a church that is radically activist, changing the world because the church exists for the world, for the light of the world. It is a church that is self-effacing it is, a, it is a church that is self-sacrificing. It is a church that is willing to be a martyr. And yet, it is also a church that is triumphant. It is also a church that is triumphant because Christ is with us. And if Christ is with us, we can never be losers. If Christ is with us, we are always on the winning side. My dear brothers and sisters, this seems to be where the church is going under the papacy of Pope Francis. A church that leads without being elitist. A church that goes to the margins without being marginalized. A church that goes to the dark areas in order to bring the light of Christ there. A church that is willing to die and yet a church that is triumphant. A church that refuses to be ideological to be conservative or progressive, to be left or right, to be pink or dilawan or red or blue or whatever color. It is the church of Christ that does not choose any colors because the color of the church is the color of Jesus Christ. This is the dream church. This is the church that we want to be. This is the church that we want to become. We cannot do it. We cannot do it by ourselves. We can only do it by the power of God and the power of Christ working in our lives. Let us pray that a two-year consultation in preparation for the Synod on Synodality will truly bring about the renewed church, the church that the Lord has planned and willed for humanity at this point in history.